Asna Tema Madumo. Welcome to Soweto TV. Thank you for having me it's on Soweto TV, Leto. For the first time I'm on Soweto TV, Wow, actually. I mean, look, we, we're honored to actually have this sitting with you just to be able to, you know, talk to you about your life, you know, and everything else that you've, you've been in this country for mm. so, so, so many years. And so, just take us through, man. Tell us about Notemba, uh, where she comes from, who she is. Well, this is uh, a woman. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. Uh, actually, was born in uh, Crown Mines here in Johannesburg. But my parents moved to Swaziland when I was very young, and I practically grew up there. Oh, wow. Uh, all my schooling there, including university, was there. And uh, then my mom passed away while we were in Swaziland. Uh, my dad moved back to, uh, but he moved back to Bob. So that's how I ended up in Bob. Oh, yes. Okay. And uh, then he moved back to Pretoria. He's from Pretoria. Uh, so you, you, when you, when I saw you are a Kasi Kelnje. Oh. Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but you've always like well, you. If, if Swaziland is Kasi, that's where I grew up. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he's, he's from Mamelodi and my mother is from the Eastern Cape. Yeah. Oh, okay. In so in, uh, I mean, growing up, I mean, we, you, I mean, you grew up during the times of apartheid as well. Yeah. And, um, but I, I, I just trying to look at what you do now, which mm. is music. Uh, has any of, is anything, is any of the stuff that you're doing now, um, stuff that you were interested in as a young girl growing up. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, I do. I do jazz uh, right now. Even though I've done all sorts of other things, both on television yes. and radio. But I grew up listening to jazz in the, at, at home because that's all that my father and my mother played in the house. In fact, my mother was um, a music teacher oh. as well as a science and mathematics. A teacher and my dad was uh, also a teacher oh, wow. uh, but he was into economics and uh, language and law everything you know he, he he was also lecturing that um, so um, I also learned to play the piano while I was young in oh, fact wow. uh, talking about the apartheid the, uh, during the apartheid time uh, when we were in Swaziland a lot of the exiles used to come by at our house uh, mm. You know, and uh, the likes of Abdullah Ibrahim, when he was, he also left, he left through Swaziland, and in fact, he became my piano teacher. Oh, wow. I was well, about to ask because <laughs> he is like yes. one of your favorites. Yeah, yeah, no, I, th I probably that's the reason why I love the piano so much, you know. Mm. Well, so mm. then that's actually just so that. I mean, we have such a diverse history, and we're mm. not talking about it. And a lot There's of so us. many stories to tell about, especially about you know, the different experiences during that period yes. uh, where it's not only just one narrative that's just told to the world, yes. you know, about how we all experience apartheid then, you know, um, also including the lives of the people who are in exi yes. exile, yes. Uh, even their kids, you know. So it shouldn't just story. be locked into in the stories of politicians, but on, exactly. ordinary members or just as well. Ordinary people, people should and also how, be given the space to also, share their stories. Yes, and also what they did to try and make their lives work under those conditions. Yeah, hmm. that must have, that must have been tough for you. Uh, look, I was lucky, you know, in the sense that the the very reason that my parents even moved there is so to provide me and my siblings a better education. Oh, yes. You know. Yeah. And I was at, uh, you know, Waterford High School. This is where all the kids of exiles would go, you know, mm. uh, uh, to also get, I mean, Zinzi and Zenani Mandela, yes. you know, Zinzi was my classmate, wow. you know, at, at Waterford back then. So just, so it was another side of the apartheid system. And that yes. was a mixed school of whites and black people, you know, so also just even how we even relate to a, a different race yes. in our adult life is also based on a foundation different from how others experience, experience. the apartheid period. So now, take us through when you came back to South Africa now, mm. as, as someone who has completed school and 
Uh, and then, you know, your interest in TV and radio, how did that come about? Well, while I was a student in Swaziland, I started working for television there, actually, as a continuity announcer, and then I started presenting news, and also do, being, doing previewing of uh, all the programs as well. And I was actually the envy at, at university of other students, because I had the first one to have a TV in my room, because mm -hmm. I needed to watch TV to Jeez. know what's going on. <laughs> must have been a cheerleader as well, you know, like, <laughs> with your energy. Not really. I was uh, belonging to the naughty group. <laughs> to the naughty group yeah. at school, yeah. But so, uh, that's, you know, that's where my, my uh, interest in uh, was also just started there in, okay. in, in the media, yeah. But you did sports. But tell us about that, you know, the site where you... At some sports. point, you. Were, oh, when I was doing it was a weekend. Yes, you know, it 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 had a, a feel of sporty. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, because all of us as kids would, you know, sit down because I think it came before Studio Mix, if if I'm not. Yes, mistaken. on Fridays. On yes. Fridays. So that's what I mean. Fridays used to be generally, and then we go up towards the weekend, and then Studio Mix. Then Studio Mix. And and but you were a very, a colorful part of the show. And well, in fact, even that, I mean, I, okay, I had done television and radio in, 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 in uh, Mabato, yeah. obviously on Bob TV and Radio Bob. So even when I came, moved back to Joburg, um, I, was, uh, I, I worked for Urban Brew, but I was behind the scenes, you know. Yeah. I was doing uh, also working on all the programs, but not on camera. So when uh, they, they, you know, they asked me if I'd like to present the sports program, like, sports program. How, how so? You know, yes, I like sports as any other ordinary person, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know enough to present it. And, because, and they, just, they just said to me, trust us, you, you, will, just, you will know exactly what to do. Because remember, mm. that back in the day, it was just uh, a role exclusive to males. Absolutely, when, yeah. You know, so when we saw you being able to do that, you know, these were the times when Bafana Bafana was also there. Yes, the and 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 I think also because of the the, the format of that program, yes. it made it even easier. Even though at first, you know, a lot of male viewers were like, "What is this woman doing on our screens presenting sport?" You know, but after a while, they got to realize that, um, you know, uh, I can and any other woman can do it as much as any other man, because but it also just uh, helped me in, in my interest in sports because then I got to know the sports uh, players, you know, about the, the games as well and it, it was fantastic. In fact, thanks to it was a weekend, I got to attend the World Cup in France when Bafana Bafana were there. Oh, in 1998. Yes, in 1998. You seem to be just stepping into all these uncharted territories. I mean, because now you are now specializing, I would say, maybe your a huge part of your work is now in the jazz yes. fraternity. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. How did that come about? Because you, 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 you earlier you spoke about Abdullah Ibrahim mm. uh, playing the piano. Have you always known that you would ultimately want to be in the space where you just embrace jazz and do the shows and that? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I think it, it, it also gravitated towards me because of my interest and passion mm. in uh, jazz music, even on Radio Bob. You know, as much as I presented other programs, but uh, I was the first woman to present, you know. Yes. Uh, I think no. I think Felicia Mabuza Sattler did it for a bit, and then when I got to Bob, then I I did the jazz show as well. In fact, I co-hosted first uh, with the presenter. Then, then um, I you know I got to do it on my own. So even when I came this side, um, I started presenting a jazz show with uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, with Kaya FM, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, also with SAFM. And I would sit in sometimes on 702's jazz show, and then now I'm on Radio Bob, oh, Bob Radio. Bob yeah. Radio. Bob so now, um, I mean, I mean, me Metro, Metro FM. FM you know, I mean, so. remember that's mm. uh, we 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 still stuck in yes, yes, there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now, with the kind of work that you do now, um, do you think there is still space for women to be able to get in there because it's it's just jazz? They are already there. Yeah, like in terms of what you've seen, what do you think we can still do? 
to be able to expand the platform? Um, because when you listen, half the time most of your listeners are males. The the women are there. It's just that they are not they are not vocal about no, being there. <laughs> because when you see, mm. it's actually more women that go to your actual concerts mm. as opposed to men as well. Yeah. So I mean, with with that on its own, knowing that a lot of jazz in this country was also based on the sentiments around apartheid as well. No, true, and and also on uh, as much as it's also uh, sexist as our society is sexist, where you know uh, music was uh, you know ma male dominated, the j the jazz genre, uh, the women were only seen as the the vocalists. Yes, yes. Now uh, women are studying mu the instruments; they are now headlining as instrumentalists. And not necessarily just as vocalists, you know. So it's and and the same applies to um, listeners and appreciators of jazz, uh, you know, of jazz music. music the well. women have always been there appreciating it, but the male's voice was the loudest. <laughs> yeah, no, I think because I have I have Excuse friends me. who who just this past weekend mm. were in Lesotho, they were in Tabawisi okay. Jazz Festival. And a lot of them are young people mm. who are just embracing the lifestyle as well because and they it, think mm. that, that, that the perception has always been that jazz is for older generation. Absolutely. And and the, the image of jazz was an old man on a Sunday under a tree with, with a beer. Some old looking with, a, <laughs> with a beer, and, uh, which was unrealistic. And uh, sadly, it is also a a narrative that has been, uh, you know, continuing for a very long time, even with the media, where yeah. no one was looking out for jazz in any other representation but that. So it, it also applies to even how jazz on, on is programmed, you know. It's mm. always on a Sunday. On a Sunday like, yeah. You can't listen to jazz on a Monday or a or Tuesday on a Friday because or a it's Thursday, always a weekend. You know, kind of thing. When jazz is, is uh, like any other music, you can listen to it every day. Uh, and I like that because we, we, you and I were in Clarence a yes. few weeks back. Yeah. And the lineup there was actually made out of a lot of young people. Yes. Uh, you know, as I said, it was, they were all under 30. Yeah, yeah, you know, yes. years of age, uh, you know, Bokani Daya and Tandin Tuli, and they are right now at the top, you know, in terms of South African jazz musicians, and they are traveling the world as well, representing us mm. around the world, which is fantastic. And for me, uh, it's, it's a great fulfillment because it, uh, which also makes what I do so, so, you know, uh, so fulfilling is because the younger generation is into this music. That means this is music that's going to continue for many more generations. Yes, come, and it's, yes. a, it's, it's such a significant uh, mus musical form because it is uh, very significant in our history as, mm. as, as South Africans uh, prior and during apartheid and even to the present because that's the music w which told uh, the state of our society at the time, yes, you know, yes, yes. And, uh, and that's the gender that we must keep. And yeah. we have to keep it because it's the most, it's the freest, you know, genre of music in terms of expression, you know. Let's talk about that. Like, you walk around so to there's not much happening when in terms of jazz. You don't see jazz clubs, you know. I mean, even maybe Kuma Melodi or Gotembisa and all of that. We see a lot of pubs coming up, but you don't see it's one. Not, yeah, it, they, the, the, the jazz uh, clubs, so to speak, are not very formal. You know, where, yeah, okay, this is a jazz club, and that's all, you go, that's all you're going to get, which is unfortunate, of course. But um, also, you know, to sustain a, a, a club, a lot of people start off as a jazz club, and then they change it because... They want to see a lot of uh, numbers, maybe. numbers, you know, because then it, it affects their pocket, and so eventually the the jazz element, you know, dies off, or it's very minute, you know, and it only only on Sundays, yes. you know, again coming back to, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But um, 
there are a lot of uh, jazz appreciators and they form their own ways of you know appreciating jazz and is getting it, together and hmm? is it always because i mean like we we are in this magnificent uh, beautiful place that uh, we're going to show you later on i mean as you can see it's a beautiful Old place Berry Hall this is where on the 31st Hotel. we're yeah. gonna be uh, Soweto TV and we also like to encourage you to come through because it's just a family beautiful day for all of us just to come and immerse ourselves in this in, in this uh, event but be part of the event mm. but it has always been just somewhere go Zoo Lake or Kotoko's Park yes and, I mean... and an exclusive place nice place like this you know people would not even think that we can have a, a jazz concert in a place like this uh, absolutely, uh, and this place which we are, we're going to be hosting the uh, Christmas Eve uh, Jazz in the Park uh, is, has been very gracious to allow us to do this uh, because not only is the setting just absolutely gorgeous, I mean even today the weather is, the weather uh, is beautiful. lovely and uh, what's nice about this place is that it's very family orientated can bring your kids and kids have got stuff to do they can run around and play uh, they not only do they serve fantastic food, food as well, and yes. drink but <laughs> 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 but um, it's just like a few minutes drive from you know a lot of places you know here in the north yes. so and it's just it's also just gets to show everyone that look at the beautiful Environment, environment that we live in yes. yeah, in, in Johannesburg. Because I think that has mm. a, a tourism uh, element in yes. it as well. Because if people like uh, when we went to Clarence, mm. uh, a lot of people were from Johannesburg. Yeah. And I think maybe over 100 people. And we were talking of air uh, to saying, imagine if we had organized the party bus from Johannesburg. Yeah, to go all, all the way. And take all those people in that one bus. That's part of Rimba Nation. And people want, want to go out, you know, uh, and have a good time and as much as you know, there are regular places that they go to, but they want to discover, you know, yes. other places. In fact, this whole area here is is got beautiful venues, you know, where people can go for lunch, for picnic, for dinner, have weddings or parties or whatever, you know, or business uh, lunches or whatever the case may the be. Case may be the yes. whole area here is just gorgeous. In fact, we we have uh, last year, the, this year, well, in 2019, yeah, fella, no. Yeah, fella, no. We all just <laughs> uh, few more days. We had our International Jazz Day in this area as well, oh, wow. which is not far from here as well. I think it's about 10 minutes drive from here. Also beautiful out, you know, it, we, we had uh, jazz on the beach on, at that time yes. because it's got a, like a beach area and a big dam. Wow. And, you know, so you see, we didn't even know there's a, there's a beach here. Yeah, it's just around <laughs> the corner here. Yeah, and exactly. then, yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, now we, we used to, you go to Pinvale, but whatever there, then we just have no, our stuff. It's, there. it's got, got gorgeous places. Talk to us about the lineup here. I mean, you, I mean, yeah. We're coming here, mm. you, you need to know at least if there's any. Because jazz, with if with jazz, anything, all the artists can be good, you yes. know, depending on your ear. But we just want to know who's going to be... Well, Spam Jalos is going to be performing. So is Notende. And Notende, by the way, is my niece. Oh, wow. So, uh, so uh, it runs in a family. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Lingwasa is also going to be here performing. And uh, he, he says he wants to do some um, such more kind of songs. You know, Louis Armstrong songs, no, you know, yeah. you know he's a trumpeter. Uh, and we've got the acid jazz connoisseurs. Those are the jazz DJs uh, who I feature normally on my show yes. on, on, on uh, Metro FM. So they'll also be DJing and I will be uh, playing as well. And uh, in fact, I've, what, what I've done is I've invited if there are any musicians who come on the day, if they bring their instruments, they can just come and join and jam you know, with other musicians. So if we tell our viewers at home, then... Yes, then, look, if this is, this is you, here's your chance you. to be seen and to be known. Just come, bring your instrument no, and, more and jam, and jam sure with anybody. We, we, yeah, we Because we do have lots of aspiring jazz artists. Absolutely, well. I mean, yes. They, you know, the talent might not, and it just needs to be refined, but I think getting an opportunity like this... Absolutely, and, and you, 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 at least you'll get a, a response from the audience to know whether you're on the right track or yes. not. 
or go and get another career. <laughs> <laughs> Just like what Kutano said, you know, Kutano Masote, I remember when he was yeah. doing that 40 uh, piece. Um, the and orchestra. that was beautiful, yes, it by was the beautiful. Way. At the and Golden Gate Classic. Yeah, he yes. said that if by age 12 you can't play piano, go play <laughs> soccer or something. <laughs> No, true, that's true. But yeah. it's, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, it starts, the gates open at 8. Okay. It 8 a.m. 8 a.m. In fact, the earlier you come, the better, because then you, you pick the best spot. picnic spot, yes, yes. you know, for you and your family. And then uh, it starts at 10, and we finish at 6, so that uh, those who want to go and get us yes. later, in the, in, at night, <laughs> at midnight, they can <laughs> go and but do I that. But I think with mm. coming to a beautiful and also choosing the newer Eve to be able to do it, to mm. stage it, uh, I just don't think anyone would come here and then after that go to Kitaspekan because the place itself, there is so much tranquility around. Absolutely. It. Because fact, the witch then actually makes you jazz, then mix it with a very nice lifestyle. Yes, and I mean, and the fact that, you know, the kids are welcome, who knows, you might be exposing your kids to this beautiful music, you know, that uh, they never thought, you know, yes, you know, well, they can be exposed to and enjoy. And exactly. So, so yes. now I want just to, you know, as we're going to end our discussion, just to tell us what, you know, the projects that you're currently doing and what is it that you like to see with these projects, including mm. the Clarence one as well. Well, I, um, I run a company called Forever Jazz, and uh, the point of the company is really to promote the jazz genre, okay. and also to give an opportunity where we can to musicians to have a platform, uh, you know, and, and showcase their work, and also just promoting the jazz lifestyle. I have, uh, every August, I have Wine, Women and Jazz, oh, wow. an event where I invite women, and women, women only, women only but men come anyway. Can I come next year? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, um, so in, in, that, in that, in fact, we, this year was the third one we were, ho we were hosting. And we, we go to different venues. So we have a wine sponsor, we have women, and we have jazz musicians and on, only female performers. Mm. We also uh, celebrate International Jazz Day, which is on the 30th of uh, April, an international day we're celebrating and in the month of um, April which is uh, Jazz Appreciation Month there are all sorts of events that are, take place and we also try and create events in fact we might be doing ours here as well at, at uh, Toadbury Hall uh, this year we also have uh, Forever Jazz Fridays or Forever Jazz Thursdays where we do uh, partner with any uh, a venue that uh, we just come have either have a musician or DJs to just play as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I also run a website where I do interviews with artists and about events as well and uh, just really just also just promoting what is happening in the jazz scene. So these well. are all your annual events that you, yes. you have? Yes. That, that sounds like quite a lot. It's not a lot yet. <laughs> I, if, if I had it my way, I'd have something happening every weekend yeah. or every month for that matter. But, uh, you know, logistics and uh, the bottom line are always... Uh, so, I mean, uh, I mean we, we, we're coming from Soweto, we're broadcasting. Um, and, I mean, a lot of our viewers are young women. Uh, and, and lovely yeah what's mm. what i mean i just i just want you to as in closing it and um, what what's your message to a lot of young aspiring other notembers out there who wanna get in, into the space of broadcasting television and and all of that okay uh, all all i can say is if it is your passion do it and uh, don't do one thing because as human beings, we are multifaceted. Yes. As much as you can, you know, get into. Um, I mean, I'm passionate about about just media and communication. That's why the the radio and the TV is is the best platform. And also, just find something that you believe in and you're passionate about, which then forms uh, the content and your vision you know, about it, yes. rather than, yeah, all over the place, we yes. oh, wow. and <laughs> like, who and what are you about? Yes. And um, 
and like I, when I say, you know, we are multifaceted, you don't have to only just do that. You can do other things. You can be a pilot if you want, or a doctor if you want, or a deep sea diver, and be you know, as and as still be a musician or a, you know, a, you know, a writer or a poet or, a, you know, anything you can be. You can be a whole lot of things. This world is ours. It's ours. And, uh, and the fact that now, you know, women, uh, uh, not only just having an opportunity, but they are taking the opportunity that's there and they are not waiting for anyone to say I anymore. There's no more no, it's yes all the way. <laughs> Asna Temba, thank you so much for talking to us. Here thank you. Today. And we wish you all the best. Uh, we would be here. You're going to be here on yes. the 31st yes. of December yes. uh, for the Jazz in the Park right here at Toadbury Hall Hotel. Thank you for having me and uh, I look forward to seeing you and having fun with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.